Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nay Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be another Bible review, and this is going to be on the A.W. Tozer Bible. It is in the King James Version, and it is from Hendrickson Bibles, if you guys can see that right there. So, I did get this Bible a while back, and if I can find the video, I will leave a link to it. You can just click the eye on the screen if I can find that video when I haul this. But I got it a while back from ChristianBook.com when they were having their $5 sale because it just seemed like something I would be interested in. I am in the process of building my collection of both C.S. Lewis as well as A.W. Tozer's works because they're just two authors and two well-known influential people that I really just want to learn from. Um, so I figured this Bible would be one that I could, you know, use to figure out which books I want to get from him as well as to integrate them with the books that I do own. So this Bible you can get on Amazon for either $40 with free shipping if you have Prime or you can get it for $13 plus $6 shipping if you get it from another seller, seller, from another seller. I did not see this Bible on ChristianBook.com anymore, so I'm not sure if they still do have it. I will check again, but I'm not sure if they do. Um, if you guys hear any drumming, that is my brother. I apologize. He is leaving tomorrow to go on tour, so he's just having his fun. But yeah, let's dive into this. So this is a dust jacket. The Bible itself does have the same sort of design, which I appreciate when companies and publishers do this with their Bibles because sometimes I don't like dust jackets. Um, it, it just is, it is what it is. But um, quickly on the back, I'm just going to read what this says. So it says, this unique volume features over 500 key selections and teachings carefully drawn from more than 40 writings by dynamic pastor, preacher, and teacher Aiden Wilson Tozer. The selections are taken from bestsellers like The Pursuit of God and The Attributes of God, as well as lesser known works such as The Size of the Soul and The Roots of the Righteous. Each excerpt appears in one of three categories. On scripture, where there are over 365 selections, each sharing the page with the Bible verse to which it refers, and it adds depth and insight to a particular verse's application for the believer. Reflections is the next one, which has more than 100 excerpts that apply the deep meaning of the Christian faith to everyday life. And then the final kind of um, category is challenges, in which there are nearly 100 entries tied to scripture that exhort the reader to resist complacency in particular areas of one's living out the word in the world. The word in the world. Then there is a biography, um, book introductions, words of Christ, and Red concordance, and maps. So let's just dive into this. So opening up the Bible, you have some white end pages, which I think is great just for jotting notes. Simple as that. You have this page here with a photo of A.W. Tozer. The cover page with the copyright. So this comes in hardcover, flexi soft black, flexi soft brown and tan, um, flexi soft brown teal, or genuine leather in black. It can come thumb indexed or not. Then you have your biography of Aiden Wilson Tozer. I have not read this yet, so hopefully I can get into this soon. You have your epistle, epistle dedicatory of the KJV, your table of contents. And then you have the books in alphabetical order, and then you get right into the Old Testament. So here is how the introduction looks. Um, you basically get your background information, your message, your time, and then a small little reference kind of outline. It's not going to be in-depth because this is not a study Bible. It's literally just a reference Bible. Simple as that. Um, turning the page, you see the setup of this Bible. So you do have three columns. Um, the first two columns are the actual text and then the outer column is the third column which has a lot of cross references which I can appreciate. Then you have your footnotes at the bottom. And then you see the three categories of excerpts. So you have challenges, reflections, and then on scripture. So on scripture will directly tell you which verse it is referring to. So for this it is talking about Genesis 1-1 and it gives you the information from the book and it tells you which book it is talking about. With reflections you literally just get an excerpt from the book and this is like the title of the book at the bottom. Same thing with challenges you get an excerpt from the book and it tells you which book it's from. I love the design. Um, it's very much has an old kind of 
Victorian feel to it. I just, I like the way it looks like burnt up or ripped up papyrus paper or, you know, scroll paper. I just really like that look. So, not every page will include some sort of excerpt. You know, it's just not possible. Um, so, you have this here where it's just the two column text with the footnotes and the cross references on the outer corner. This is great for doing micro Bible journaling. I will leave a card above that you can click on by clicking the eye and it will send you to a video that talks about um, micro Bible journaling. Here are the Psalms and how it looks. This Bible does not come with a bookmark, which I wish it did come with one, but it just does not. So then you dive into the New Testament section. And again, here's your book introduction with the background message time and then the outline. So it's literally giving you the bare minimum type of information. Um, that's why I don't consider it a study Bible. So like I said, this is red letter text. Hopefully it is coming up on camera. The red is more of like an orangey red, but you can definitely see the difference between the black text and the red letter text. And then here's a page with complete red letter text. So hopefully that comparison helps. Red letter, black. Going into John, here is a look. You have two challenges and an on scripture. So again, this is for John 3.16. So 3.16 is right here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should have not should not perish, but have everlasting life. And um, it gives you, like I said, the scripture and the excerpt from the book. Here's another one for John on scripture. Both coming from John 19. Here's First Corinthians where you have nothing, no articles, no excerpts. It's just the two column text with the references at the outer column. Then you dive into your concordance. And this concordance is weird only because the setup is just like, what? It's a weird setup. I'm not used to this kind of concordance setup, um, but it is a nice hefty size concordance. I mean, it's a nice hefty size concordance. Really nice hefty size. Let me see if I can grab the other pages. So that's a good size concordance. I don't know how many pages that is. Probably more than 35. Eh, maybe, maybe not, but good size. Then you have recitations of Tozer's works. So it just goes through the information um, from all of the excerpts that are used. So his well-known books as well as his lesser-known books are mentioned here, which is a great resource if you're looking to purchase any of these. You have a blank page, another blank page, and then you go straight into your maps. And I like these maps. So this map is the geography of the lands of Israel and Palestine. This is the Exodus and Conquest of Canaan, the Kingdoms of Israel and Judah during the Divided Monarchy, the Land of Israel and Palestine in the first century of the Common Era, this is the Roman Empire from Paul's Journeys, Jerusalem and the Temple of the Old Testament Times, and then this is the same kind of map but in the New Testament Times. And to end, it then gives you the Jewish and Christian communities in late antiquity. Then you get that blank page again, and you're done. So, my thoughts on this Bible. Is it a necessity? Of course not. I, I don't think this Bible is one that you have to go and get. I, I, I'm not even going to tell you that. It's not. Um, if you can find this Bible for a good price, I would say maybe you should get it only because of the excerpts from A.W. Tozer's different books. I'm a book nerd. I do own a lot of A.W. Tozer's ebooks. Um, I have a few books that are physical form, so I felt like this would be a perfect match. As I am reading those books, I can come here to this specific Bible to put any other notes that I have from his stuff. 
um, which sounds stupid, but, <laughs> you know, um, I just think it was great. Now, if you are interested in learning about A.W. Tozer, I would say get this if you don't own anything from him, only because there are so many different excerpts from his various books, and it would help you to understand which one of his books you like. And I think that's, again, the plus that I, I enjoy about this one, is that it goes through a lot of his different books. And again, at the back, you have the citations of his work. So they talk about the attributes of God, volumes one and two, Born After Midnight, Christ the Eternal Son, The Counselor, The the Early Tozer, A Word in Season, Echoes from Eden, Faith Beyond Reason, God Tells Man, Tells a Man Who Cares, God's Pursuit of Man, which we all know, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit, I Call It Heresy, I Talk Back to the Devil, Jesus, Author of Our Faith, Jesus is Victor, Jesus, Our Man in the Glory, Man, the Dwelling Place of God, Men Who Meet, Men Who Meet God, or Who Met God, sorry of God and men, the old cross and the new, paths to power, the pursuit of God, the radical cross, the root of righteousness, rut, rot, or revival, the set of the sail, the size of the soul, success in, Christ in the Christian, um, Tozer on worship and entertainment, the Tozer pulpit volumes one, Tozer speaks volume one and two, Sp Tozer speaks the student, tragedy in the church, I mean, it's giving you a list of his works, you have worship, the missing jewel, um, who put Jesus on the cross, whatever happened to the worship, uh, the warfare of the spirit. So I just think it's great that you have so many of his books, um, bits and pieces and excerpts in which you can go through this Bible, read them and see which interests you and whichever interests you go grab them. I mean, the price of neglect. I've never heard of that. You know, God's pursuit of man, I do own. So I think that's going to be great to be able to go here and look at the scriptures and the references and stuff like that. So, um, do I recommend this? Yes, I do. Is it a necessity? Of course not. It's one of those Bibles that if you have the funds or if you desire to own it, you should own it. But I don't think it's something that you have to own. Um, but yeah, this Bible is great. I haven't used it yet because like I said, I haven't started reading any of his work. I have started reading C.S. Lewis's stuff. So I'm hoping in August I can start diving, August, September, start diving into some of his books since I have so many of them here. Some of his bind ups and devotionals. But, um... Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, you guys. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them down below. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. Click that bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!